Hi, it's Will from TelescopeNerd.com and StormTheCastle.com. And this is a guide for getting the most out of a telescope like one of these you see here. Maybe you have a telescope like the refractor on the left, or the reflector on the right. You know, something like these types of telescopes are very popular and a lot of people buy one because they're interested in astronomy and they're interested in taking a look at things in the night sky. You know, maybe you have one, you tried it a couple of times, it's in the closet now. Maybe you're thinking about getting one. Uh, but you can really have a wonderful astronomy experience with a small telescope like this if you just know how to use it. This is a guide to help you use one of these types of small telescopes to its maximum potential. So let me give you some tips here on how to use it. Now of course you know you look inside the eyepiece. And the refractor, in the refractor you look in the eyepiece in the bottom, and the reflector you look in the eyepiece on the side. Everybody knows that, but there's a lot of things people don't realize when it comes to using a telescope effectively, getting some good viewing. Let me give you the tips. One. Uh, you should bring the telescope outside an hour before you're planning to use it, or at least half an hour. This will acclimate it to the temperature. Otherwise, the optics will do up and reduce the viewing without you even knowing it. There's a, in the case of this telescope particularly, the inside of this is sealed. So the air inside there is the same temperature as you're keeping it stored in your house. If you bring this outside and it's cool out or cold out, um, that takes time for that temperature to change. What will happen is lenses will fog up. And it takes time for that, the temperature to change uh, to what the surrounding environment is. That fogging up may cause, will cause poor viewing. You won't even know it. You might not even know that you're actually not using the telescope to its potential. You're looking through a fogged a lens. Uh, two, this is something that people don't often think about, but you know, find the darkest spot you can find. It's better for the telescope and better for your eyes. So if you put it on the porch where there's a light there, um, you're not using the telescope very well. That light will affect your eye, so you won't be able to see as well, and it'll affect the telescope. Three, you should stand outside in the dark area for 15 minutes to allow your pupils to open up to the maximum viewing. Just like your pupils, if you shine a light in them, they get small. It takes time for them to get really, really big so you can see the maximum through the telescope. So go outside for 15 minutes, in the dark with your telescope and allow your eyes to slowly acclimate and adjust to the maximum potential. Uh, four, when you're, finding, when you're finding a spot to put the telescope, don't put it on a deck or someplace that's going to vibrate because just you walking on the deck is going to shake that telescope. And if you're looking through the eyepiece, say you're magnifying 50 times or 100 times, the vibrations are going to be magnified 50 or 100 times. So put it on solid ground somewhere, cement or earth. Um, five, try to do your viewing on a night with no moon or just a sliver of moon. Moon causes light pollution that washes the rest of the sky out. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about setting up the finder scope. This is something that a lot of people don't realize you have to do, but you really should do this. Here's the finder scope here on this telescope, and here's the finder scope on this telescope. If you just point your telescope at the sky and start looking around, there's a lot of empty space, and this is what you will see. So you have to set up a little finder scope to help you fix the situation. You use this little scope to find something first, then you look at it through the big telescope. So you find your object in the night sky with this small magnification telescope first, and then you look at it through the big telescope. So, but the thing about that is this small, the, small, the small finder scope has to be pointed the same way as the telescope to work. Here's how you set it up. Look through the finder scope. It has crosshairs in it. Point the finder scope at a faraway object and center the object on the crosshairs. Now look through the telescope. Is it also centered on the object? If not, then adjust the screws in the finder until you are both seeing the same image. So you, you adjust the screws on this so they're both pointed at the exact same image somewhere on the earth that you can see easily. That way when you're using it on the night sky, they'll both be aligned up correctly. So what happens is, now you're going to find your object through this, and then when you look through the telescope, it'll be in the middle, or close to the middle. Otherwise, you're poking around trying to find things with this. is very difficult. Okay, next big point. Getting and using a star map. Now, to find an object like galaxies, nebula, and planets, you'll need to use a star map. The star map shows you where all these objects are. How you do that is you find a constellation in the sky, then you zero in on the object. The constellation and the stars in it are a guide map and reference for finding the object. 
This image shows the constellation of Orion. And this image shows a nebula that you can look at with the telescope. So find the constellation of Orion with your eyes, then you point your telescope finder at a bright star near the nebula. From there you can slowly move the scope to find the nebula. Okay, next tip. Start out with the lowest power eyepiece. If your telescope has several eyepieces, you should start out with the lowest power. It has the biggest lens in it. This will give you a view of more of the sky so you can more easily find things. It will be easy to find the object, then center the object and switch to the high powered eyepiece to get a closer look. In summary, a small telescope can show you a lot of amazing things in the night sky. You won't see things like this, but you will get good looks at things like this. And this. Okay, so I hope uh, if you have a telescope like this, or you're thinking about getting a small telescope like this, I've given you some nice tips in understanding how to get the most out of it. So yank it out of the closet and uh, take it out in the night sky and uh, give it a shot. Telescopes are a passion of mine. I really love them. And uh, there's more telescope stuff on my website at telescopenerd.com. That's www.telescopenerd.com. And of course, there's always lots of fun stuff on my website at stormycastle.com.